Hi, um, thank you for staying and then joining me here on Friday night. Uh, first, um, I'd like to thank to the um, Kayo Studio, is it right? Um, members who organized this symposium and invited me, um, Dalia, Sara, Matis, and Julian. Thank you. Um, I will start with, um, yeah, also thank you for the introduction, but I will also start with introducing myself shortly and then start my presentation. Uh, my name is Anna Yu and a visual artist and filmmaker currently based in Berlin. Um, I have a background in visual arts and psychology and I make um, research-based film and video. Um, yeah, film and video and installations which often uh, examines and widely maps out um, interrelationships between humans and non-human animals and appropriations of technology in between. Um, so I um, work with uh, mainly fantastical and also documentary um, narratives and visualize them into moving images or into space. Um, yeah. Today I will be presenting my one of my recent project called Chambers, which is um, a story about animal, machine, and ecology of empathy. Uh, this project Chambers is a um, yeah a research project consists of two videos and one machine learning generated moving image. Um, and at the end showcased as an installation. Uh, but today I will present my research and video pieces as um, an sort of artistic lecture performance. Yeah, there'll be a, there was a long introduction. Yes, um, these are the stories that are um, seemingly connected, but also not so connected. Mm, it might be relevant to each other, but also not entirely. Um, looking for a loophole in this loose structure um, that is um, like, there is like three different agents, white, red, laboratory, red, and machine learning. And this loose structure that has been buried behind the history um, being unrecognized, untold, often invisible and biased. We will get back to this map at the end of the slide. Yes, and now this is the first story. Reinforcement learning. Um, in early mid 20th century, a psychologist B.F. Skinner devised an operant conditioning chamber known as a Skinner box to study animal behavior. Using a lever system that a rat presses to gain food inside the chamber. This is a chamber that you see. Um, oh, this is the actual chamber. Um, Skinner discovered that the food acts as a reinforcement, which induces rats repetitive behavior. By criticizing psychoanalysis, behaviorism is known to bring a scientific approach to psychology, which was to limit only the behaviors, only what we can see as the research subject. Um, Skinner firmly believed that this discovery could be applied to humans to induce changes in human behavior. Um, after that, people started to use rats to scare human babies. Uh, pigeons were trained to pack the missile button inside the missile for the World War II. And also, this is quite a well-known example combination with 
reinforcement learning and the mass media also has a long tradition in belief system. Um, the discovery of reinforcement learning is implemented as an application in many more areas and disciplines with um, different names. So as you can see in neuroscience, economics, mathematics, engineering, and one of them is computer science and it's named the machine learning. The idea of reinforcement machine learning is to train machine and let it makes its own sequence of decisions. Um, the most known and beloved application is self-driving car and applications in trading and finance as well, in language processing and in healthcare, DTR, and also in robotics. So um, how did the rats lever pressing behavior flow into the self-driving car? What are we missing in this, in this cybernetic cycle from rat to humans to machines? What happened to the rat that perhaps didn't press the lever in the Skinner box? Or what are the rats inside the chamber? Why are the rats inside the chamber? And why are we out of chamber? Can I show you one video here? Thank you very much. I'm pleased to be here and uh, particularly pleased to have these good questions. They, some of them are pretty tough, but they really are. Uh, are, I, I think, very basic. I want to start off with, with one which, to which I can tie some of the others, and that is how much do I think that research on animal behavior will contribute to an understanding of and modification of human behavior?
So reinforcement learning is concerned with this really foundational issue of how can intelligent agents learn to make a good sequence of decisions. In contrast to a lot of what is covered in machine learning, we are going to be thinking about agents, the intelligent agent in general that might or might not be human or biological, and how it can make not just one decision, but a whole sequence of decisions. We are going to be concerned with goodness. And what we mean by good, here is some notion of optimality. We have some utility measure over the decisions that are being made. And the final critical aspect of reinforcement learning is the learning. That the agent doesn't know in advance how its decisions are going to affect the world or what decisions might necessarily be associated with good outcomes. And instead, it has to acquire that information through the experience. So when it's a baby, for example, it has a primitive brain and one eye swims around and then attaches to a rock. And when it's an adult, it digests its brain and just sits there. And so maybe this is some indication of the point of intelligence, the point of having a brain, and at least in part, is helping it to guide decisions. And so once all the decisions in the agent's life have been completed, maybe we no longer need a brain. Oh, 
So, what was the question? Why are rats inside the chamber? Let's look at this graph. Uh, this graph indicates the measurement of the ratio of a species actual brain mass to its predicted brain mass. As you can see in the bottom, the humans won the game of intelligence. Um, guess who invented this intelligent game? Uh, yeah, it's invented by this person and commissioned by French government early 1900s. I'm gonna introduce one of our machine learning behavior experiment. Um, this experiment involves 66 chambers, uh, 132 agents, 23 seconds of training with one machine brain. So the rule is actually quite simple. The red agent, as you can see, there's a red shape red is moving around, uh, is trained to move inside the chamber, which is um, invisible, um, is, has been taken as a transparent, and look for the gingerbread man. And when it finds the gingerbread man, it has to bring it to the other red. Um, the experiment runs as long as the computer system runs, and the agents are constantly brought back to chambers after a certain number of moves. And uh, this is a machine learning trained um, play by 3D game engine. And uh, what you are seeing is a recording. And this is the top view. The black line indicates the agent's movement traces. And this is, a, a, again, another different perspective. Um, it's, it's like a forest view, and this is how it looks like from the outside the chambers after around 20 minutes of running the experiment. So on the top, top side when it, where is the quite dense is the chambers, 66 chambers. And uh, the rats, um, usually they couldn't finish or whether they finish the task or not, they fall out of the chamber. And uh, the falling lines are the traces of these falling rats. 
So what are, are these lines representing? Um, these are surely more interesting for us than the agent's predicted programmed behavior. Is going out of the chamber, what does that mean? Is it a failure or is it an escape, death or rebellion? From the point of endless avis where rats fall into, let's move to the a little bit different story. Some said um, pain is unbreakable cycle of life itself. Most of us are living half asleep, so we can't really see the fundamental pain or we don't want to see it. So recognizing pain is the first step to the out of this cycle, some said. But how do you see the pain? There is a person who might be in pain, as many people might recognize. Uh, one might even feel her pain, even uh, if one really takes time and then looks into. How about the giant squid in the, in the right side? Is it also in pain? How about now? This experiment might connect to the Skinner's behaviorism. That is, when we don't know what it is, we can only decide from how it appears and behaves. So the pain of squid disappears because it doesn't behave so, or we don't recognize it until scientists discover the squid's painful behavior or facial expression. Is self-recognition through other species even possible? How about self-recognition through AI? How can we look into others without objectifying them? Now I'm gonna show you another uh, second film. It's 16 minutes. So um, let's go back to this map. Um, seemingly not so related agents are entangled, connected and regenerating new connections. And within still the question remains, how do we recognize the pattern without reduction? How do we generate the pattern without bias? How do we develop empathy and creativity without being anthropocentric and even furthermore egocentric? So yeah, that was my lecture performance. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, I'll be happy to have some, if you have any questions, thank you.